Hi guys, Mick here from Dark Star Crystal Mines. Our last video had the geopolitical angle, looking at developments in Ontario around critical minerals. Today, the angles will be more around quartz crystal identification. Oh yeah, some real nice stuff. So there's your quartz with the hematite coating again. I just rinsed it in my puddle here. We have quartz that is found on our Dark Star claim, set in with feldspar crystals and several pegmatite intrusions. Like all crystals, the angles between quartz faces are quite distinctive. And as you will soon come to realize, there are distinctive faces that are quite typical of quartz. Today we'll look at four different approaches to identification that anyone can do with equipment of the most basic variety. The fracture of quartz, its specific gravity, its hardness, and its form. Of the many different varieties of quartz, we are simply going to focus on the rock crystal variety as it encompasses much of commonality between what you are likely to see and in learning about simple crystal there is much that can be then extrapolated to other varieties like amethyst, citrine and chalcedony. Habit and color may change but you will still have a knowledge of the underlying mineral. So firstly cleavage. Simple as it may seem there are so many varieties, habits and distorted crystal forms with quartz but all have the chemical formula of SiO2. But in crystal lattice, the quartz is composed of a tetrahedron, a pyramid shape with a silicon atom at the center of the pyramid and four oxygen atoms at each corner of the pyramid, each oxygen atom being shared by two other tetrahedra, thus forming a 3D lattice with no particular planes of cleavage. It's the same cohesive strength in every direction, and so, when quartz breaks, it fractures like glass with a conchoidal scoop, its insides wavy and much as you would see in chipped glass. In the case of glass, it also has no particular direction that is more strongly bonded than any other direction. Its atoms are entirely random, so you would refer to it being amorphous, in other words, without internal structure. So for totally opposite reasons, no structure, thus equal bonding, strength in every direction, it also breaks with conchoidal fractures. Second identification feature, specific gravity. So for this you're going to need a basic uh, piece of equipment. Quartz is a common mineral and it comprises about 20% of the Earth's crust. Unlike gold, it cannot be separated from the common river pebbles by weight, as most of them are very similar to casual comparison. You'll not find quartz accumulating in a deep crack in the riverbed or where the water slows down as minerals that are relatively heavier deposit in those areas. In a flowing stream, quartz acts like every other pebble around it. Now if you're looking at a handful of pebbles, you might have the urge to separate out your quartz crystal from other lookalikes. And to do this, you would need a balance scale, much as would be used in a high school chemistry class. I found mine at Value Village. In using the scale, you will be comparing the density of the substance that you are weighing to that of water. Simply put, you weigh your crystal as you usually would and then weigh it again in distilled water at 4 degrees Celsius. That temperature was chosen as a standard as it is at that point that the water is most dense. When weighing your crystal in water, it will displace a certain amount of liquid and it is the weight of that volume of liquid that you are intending to measure your crystal against. It is a basic scientific principle that has been attributed to the observations of the ancient Greek physicist known as Archimedes. Plugging your two measurements into the required formula, you obtain the specific gravity of whatever you are weighing. It's relative to the volume of water that it has displaced. Quartz is relatively light with a specific gravity of 2.65, whereas sapphire comes in much heavier at 3.98 to 4.06. This measurement can certainly distinguish between quartz and almost any other mineral. However, the smaller the specimen being measured, the less accurate your weighing becomes. Luster and hardness. Hardness and refractive index on a standard polished surface will combine to present the luster of a stone. Quartz has a hardness of 7 and a luster that is said to be vitreous. Hardness is a relative measure in its most basic sense when we are talking about gemology. With a hardness of 7, quartz can scratch softer substances like fluorite, calcite or glass, but it cannot scratch topaz. Admittedly, most people don't have a topaz lying around, but the fact is 
it can scratch glass, which has a hardness of between 5 and 5.5. At least this eliminates the softer minerals from the possibilities. Luster is best judged by looking at the reflected light on the surface of a face or facet. Again, it's a comparative measure. Looking at the luster of amber, it's said to be resinous, quite dull in fact. And at the other end of the spectrum is diamond's luster, which is quite brilliant due to its hardness being a hardness of 10 and the refractive index which is also high. A diamond is said to have a luster that is adamantine. Keep in mind without a refractometer the sum total of these results need to be considered when determining the possible composition of the crystal in front of you. A vitreous luster is something similar to what you would see in the reflection of light from a flat glass plate. So now we have form. What now remains is a determination that is said to be made by the most valuable instrument that you have got, your eyes. What does the crystal look like? What is the crystal system and how are the crystal faces arranged? So two words to understand before we proceed on. Habit and form. Habit is how the crystal appears in a general sense. It has nothing to do with geometry of the individual crystal and everything to do with a relative comparison to the overall appearance in relation to the perfect crystal. So by habit, you might describe the crystal as being blocky, botroidal, or needle-like. Quite clearly, the crystal, in being called needle-like, deviates from the usual expectation of a quartz crystal. While when we talk of form, we are speaking of the symmetry of the crystal and the angles that the faces meet at. And in the case of quartz, there are easily identifiable faces that occur in predictable proximity to each other. All crystals fall into one of seven systems, and each system is defined by certain symmetries and combinations of forms. A form is either open or closed, and the relative determination is based around whether the form could hold water if it is poured into it. A closed form would be able to hold water. An open form cannot hold water. There are 30 closed forms and 18 open forms in gemology or crystallography. In the case of quartz, it is found in two specific crystal systems, the trigonal system in which alpha quartz is found and the hexagonal system in which beta quartz is found. Alpha quartz forms at temperatures under 573 degrees Celsius and has a threefold symmetry, meaning the arrangement of faces repeats itself three times as the crystal is rotated around the C axis, the axis running up its central prism. You would also describe the alpha quartz as being comprised of a three-sided prism, an open form, and terminated by other open forms, such as a three-sided pyramid, a flattened pinacoid, or possibly another form that typically terminates a prism. Beta quartz has formed between 573 degrees and 870 degrees. It shows itself as this variety by its six-fold symmetry. So as you rotate the upright crystal in front of you, the same image of termination and prism face repeats itself six times to your view. So it is not so much in the prism that you will see the distinctive quartz shape, but rather in the terminations. The prism could be terminated at both ends, which is quite unusual, and indicative of a crystal that grew in a cavity with plenty of space to spare. In the case of Herkimer diamonds, it is the norm to have these doubly terminated crystals as opposed to the exception. However, there is one aspect of the quartz prism that is quite distinctive, and that is the horizontal striations across the main prism faces. It is important to understand that depending upon the growing conditions, face sizes will vary, and this explains the many shaped varieties of quartz. In the basic quartz, there are three crystal faces. The M face, which repeats itself around the prism. In other words, it is part of the prism. The R face, which is seven-sided and typically the biggest of the termination faces. And the Z face, which is a small triangular face between the R faces. Look at the crystal from above its termination. It is probably the easiest way to determine symmetry. Looking from the side, it's not a question of whether you see the prism or M face repeating itself six times. 
It is the combination of all three faces repeating themselves. So, in the alpha crystal, you will see six M faces, but in combination with the Z and R faces, you will see the same image only three times. Now comes the really funky part of the quartz crystal. Its basic tetrahedrons tend to spiral as they bond in their 3D lattice. It's called a helix, and the spiral can go either to the left or right, and the direction is sometimes represented by small X and S faces set along the edge of the R face. Depending upon the placement of the X and S faces to the right or left of the prism face, you would say that you have a right-handed or left-handed crystal. The split is about 50-50, and I am unable to determine why the helix would spiral one way or the other. Twin crystals can hamper simple visual identification, but in short, what, what we call the Brazil twin is the most common, and it is represented by the X face being on both the left and the right of the prism. It represents where both right and left-handed crystals have intergrown. So confusing as it might seem, quartz, though being common, is far from simple. There are many different twinning possibilities aside from the Brazil twin. And as much as you can develop a certain level of confidence in a crystal's identity, you cannot be certain unless in the case of quartz it is faceted and you employ a refractometer, which is beyond the scope of this video. Remember to check out our website.